if you read my book, then you come away with an idea of how the land is just as important as this big old storm coming in. Uh, you know, when you, when the National Hurricane Center comes on TV and they give you the forecast and they tell you this is the track where the storm's coming in, you know, here's the wind speed we think it's going to be at, here's the storm surge that we think it's going to rise to, it's going to be a terrible thing. They almost never tell you about the land. And the land's actually moving. The land's changing. And it changes in ways that can make, can mitigate a storm or it can make the storm worse. And that's what we do. That's what we do scientifically every day with a group that we have in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, but that's what I wanted to kind of project, though, in this book. But I wanted to do it in the, in the form of a story. So it's not just about the land moving, but the land is a character in this book. It's, uh, it's just as important as the people, but the people you know, when I first started, I, uh, I was really into to, to just to delivering a science story. And then I became fascinated, though, by the culture and the people of 19th century New Orleans and Louisiana and the mix of people, the French people and the Germans. And at that time, this was the 1850s, the slavery was still... Rampant. They had huge uh, plantations there, the sugar plantations that, that that needed hundreds of slaves to to support. It's about a storm that came in and the sea level came up uh, 14, 15 feet. The storm surge was 14 or 15 feet, and the island was only five or six feet. Scientists study something they call overwash, where the waves just kind of lap over the island and, and force the island to migrate landward. Uh, they, they do that, and they call it an overwash situation. That's not what happened on this island. This island went completely underwater. It was nothing more than a shoal, and yet a whole community lived there with a hotel, a prominent hotel, and, and all of these fancy houses and stuff. And the book is about how the island changed. And it's also about what happened to those people there. It's about a young woman named Emma Meal. Uh, she was French Creole. Anyway, she came out to the island, and she and her family stayed in this grand house with two stories high with wraparound balconies and uh, ocean front. It's the kind of ocean front house that today, you know, when people ask me what's What's the definition of a hazardous location along the beach? Well, if you can stand on the beach and you have a beautiful view of the ocean and then you turn around 180 degrees and you have a beautiful view of the back bay, you're in trouble. And the storm came in and it destroyed Emma's house prior to landfall. And it was when the wind was still blowing offshore and it took her Ultimately, it killed her seven brothers and sisters, and it killed her parents. And she ultimately was the only survivor of this group. And it took her and swept her offshore. Now, uh, but she was found on the beach by a slave the next morning. A slave who worked for, the, for her father, and the slave was a, they called him a body servant, which helped him dress in the morning and stuff like that helped her father dress in the morning. But he found her on the beach, and it was an odd time because the, the, uh, for this slave because the island was covered with, with bodies at the time. Half the people there were killed during the storm. And the, and the winds brought the bodies back, and they laid on the sand and out in the marshes behind the, the barrier island. And they were slaves thrown there with the rich planters and, and there was no longer any social hierarchy at all. to Katrina, I mean, and what happened in New Orleans and what the future is there. It's, uh, New Orleans is a target that asks that question uh, in different forms uh, uh, qu quite a bit. Um, New Orleans is, is an extremely unusual situation. Uh, what I 
the book focuses more on people living on barrier islands, mm -hmm. uh, like the Eastern Shore and Outer Banks, and, and, and what happens along, or the landforms along the Gulf Coast. New Orleans is actually 100 miles inland, uh, but they're in a terrible location. If you had to pick a location to put a big city, I mean, I, I guess you could have picked a worse location, but, you know, that one, this certain one, would rank up high. And that's because you have this huge lake to your north. And again, the counterclockwise swirl of the hurricane winds, if, if the geometry's right, that lake ends up back in the city. And if the, if the storm comes in a different direction, the winds can come directly off the ocean towards, uh, can, can uh, flood all the wetlands around there and, and come in. It, it's an interesting, interesting problem. Uh, on the on the side though for for New Orleans is that there's a reason for it to be there since it was originally established it was a commercial center all of the commerce coming down the river you know ended up in New Orleans and they would they would and still do to some degree take you know you see these pictures of these huge barges coming down many barges sometimes in a row or attached together pushed by uh, tugboats and, and then, you know, they change that cargo onto big ocean-going ships in and around New Orleans and, and let it go out. So, so there's a reason for it to be there. Uh, one thing that's really in contrast that I found interesting and that talk about right at the end of the book uh, is, is, is the realization it was a minister who was on the, on the island during the great storm of 1856. And he said afterwards, he says, you know, if I think about it, not one of us had any reason to be on this island other than, you know, it was a pleasant place to be and stuff like that. And, uh, New Orleans, to its credit, you know, there, there's a commercial reason to be there. There's no question to maintain all of South Louisiana is going to be extraordinarily difficult as sea level rise and accelerate in the future. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.